Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nyambura and this is One Honey Dot Books. Today I am going to be doing my July book haul. It's just free books, so it's going to be pretty fast. And my thanks to Jonathan who is behind the camera holding it steadily and looking fly in his little knit pants. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not trying to advertise him or anything. This is about the books, obviously. So first up is Going Down River Road by Major Wangi. I picked this up because, oh wait, it's some backstory. So in January, um, a certain so-and-so sent me a 4,000 shilling book voucher for my birthday. Uh, what's what's the equivalent of 4,000 shillings, Jonathan? This like about $35 or something like that. Yeah. And then February came, March, April, May, June. <laughs> July, I still had not bought any books and just for context, this was a prestige uh, bookshop voucher And so in July, I was like, you know what? I need to go and spend this money also because the voucher was going to expire after six months and mm, this was six months Which now let's go back to the books is how I ended up with these three books So as I was saying the first of them is going down River Road by Major Mwangi. I picked this up because um Lexa Lubanga lives in a society where you can hear doot 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 in the background but like Lexa Lubanga who hosts the Kenyan Readathon is a huge huge fan of Major Mwangi. She's also held the Major Mwangi Readathon. This was back in 2020 and she has a channel actually which you can check out. Lexa means I'll post a link to all that down below and so I was like it's kind of weird that Major Mwangi is a Kenyan classic author and I've never read Major Mwangi like I might be doing this Kenyan reading wrong so that's why I picked this up. Also some extra context before I go to the other books which I'm just going to put down because why am I holding them up? Um, the way I'm going to be doing this is like I'll move from Kenya further and further away you know, from the Republic. I don't know why I'm talking like this, but elections are coming up, so you know, I have a certain je ne sais quoi in the way I'm, you know, dealing with uh, being a Kenyan. I also don't know why I'm speaking with a French accent. Um, but let's read the synopsis. Ben is a man on the move, in bars, nightclubs, in the streets, in the brothels down River Road in Nairobi. It is in one of those, it is on one of these occasions that he meets Winnie, spelled W-I-N-N-I, -N -N and her son, Baby, who I'm going to call Baby. But Winnie runs off with her white boss, leaving her little son with Ben and destroying his trust in women. When Ben meets Ochola at a construction site, action, humor, and more people come into the picture. Mwangi's lighthearted treatment of serious situations makes an unforgettable impact. So, let's see, I've been told this book is saucy and I love sauce, so looking forward to reading this. Then the second book is Season of Migration to the North by Talib Sali. This is a Sudanese classic. Like, if people only know one book from Sudan, from Sudan, not the Sudan, Sudan, uh, it's this. And I've heard a lot about it in the past, but I sought it out because I read El Amin Abdel Mahmoud's memoir, and he speaks at length about it. And basically, like this clash between the West and um, Sudanese culture, the Sudanese state, and all of that stuff. Also because Elamin was going to be on the Stax podcast discussing this book in July. This was the July pick for the Stax podcast. I don't know if it's clear. I, I like that podcast a lot, so highly recommend. And the episode came out on the 27th. I haven't listened. I haven't listened. 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 I haven't listened yet. You know what? English is my third language. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading this. Also, this edition, it's an NYRB Classics edition, has an introduction by Leila Lalami, who I absolutely adore. Like, I love her writing. So it's exciting on, on multiple levels. So we are going to read what this book is about. After years of study in Europe, the young narrator of season of migration to the north returns to his village along the Nile in the Sudan. The Sudan, see? The Sudan. In the 1960s, it's the 1960s and he's eager to make a contribution to the new post-colonial life of his country. Back home, he discovers a stranger among the familiar faces of childhood, the enigmatic Mustafa Said. Mustafa takes the young man into his confidence, telling him the story of his own years in London, of his brilliant career as an economist, and of the series of fraught and deadly relationships with European women. 
Zach led to a terrible public reckoning and his return to his native land. But what is the meaning of Mustafa's shocking confession? Mustafa disappears without explanation, leaving the young man, whom he has asked to look after his wife, in an unsettled and violent no man's land between Europe and Africa, tradition and innovation, holiness and defilement, and man and woman, from which no one will escape unaltered. Seasonal migration to the north is a rich and sensual work of deep honesty and incandescent lyricism. In 2001, it was selected by a panel of Arab writers and critics as the most important Arab novel of the 20th century. I praise him. And then lastly, a children's book. Look at that cover. Look at it. Hey, look at it. You see the quality. Um, <laughs> when Life Gives You Mangoes by Kareen Getton. And I picked this up because I've been trying to read more Caribbean books thanks to Book of Scenes over on Instagram who enjoyed this book. But also because it was recommended to me by Winnie who works at prestige bookshop. I went to the prestige on Moy eh, Moyan and Nairobians are like, it's not Moyan, then it's Mamangina Street. It's Mamangina Street. One of my favorite streets in Nairobi because it's pedestrianized. Like, mm. So Winnie recommended this book and as I said, I'd already seen it on the internet and I was interested in reading it. So I picked it up. And there is the synopsis. Nothing much happens in Sycamore. Oh wait, first it has one of those headlines, like, you know, the ones that children's books have. A summer she can't remember, a friendship she won't forget. Nothing much happens in Sycamore, the small village where Clara lives. At least that's how it seems. She loves eating ripe mangoes fallen from trees, running outside in the rainy season, and escaping to her secret hideout with her best friend, Gaina. There's only one problem, she can't remember anything about the previous summer. When a quirky girl called Rudy arrives from England, Everything starts to change. People who live in places with diasporas in the West, y'all know what I mean. That cousin of yours called Kevin, who came back from America in 1997 and appended the awards. But anyway, moving back, going back to the synopsis, Gaina stops acting like a best friend while Rudy and Clara roam across the island and uncover an old family secret. As the summer reaches its peak and the storm and the, and the island storms begin, Clara's memory starts to return and she must finally face the truth of what happened last year. This sounds so good. Anyway, so that's it. I'm now going to show you my stack. I have post-it notes at the back because I had to take notes because otherwise Jonathan was going to have to sit and hold that camera for a thousand years. He's like, bestie, I've been doing this long enough. I can't do it again. But um, it's a start. <laughs> And that's it from me. As I say, it was a really small haul. As usual, it was 400, 400, 4,265 for this stock. The um, voucher was for 4,000 shillings, so I topped up with 265 shillings. And again, for context, 4265 would be less than $40. Um, but as I say, a certain so and so uh, gave me the voucher, so that was pretty exciting. Um, going to try and read these books before next year, as I say, because technically I'm, I'm so enthusiastic about all of them. But we all know how Tsundoku works, like it could be this time next year, I'll be like, Did I read those books? But it's a children's book, I literally could finish it today, right? So, you know, that's something I could do. Also, I'm recording this on the 5th of August 2022, and elections are coming up. So, technically, next week we'll all be like in elections mode, which generally is like halfway between holiday mode and anxiety mode, you know, an anxious holiday, so to speak. A holiday of full of anxiety. Keywords here are holiday and anxiety. And so I'm hoping that I'm going to navigate that period by reading lots of books. Starting with these ones, because they're new, they're shiny, they came from our bookshop. Um, yeah, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, and all of the good things. And also check out Jonathan's art. I'll share a link to his things downstairs. Because unlike the mystery re recording person from last time, the mystery video, Grammar? Is that the word, Jonathan? From last time, this one can be shared. Also, he has an online presence, unlike the last person. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. And if you're a Kenyan and you're watching this, take care.
I want to say I love Kenya, but borders. Um, yeah, so take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.